thanks for watching and today I want to give you a cool derivation of the integral for minus infinity to infinity of sine of x squared dx which I've asked on my multivariable exam but no one seemed to like this but maybe you will like this but one disclaimer though this is not entirely rigorous interestingly it gives you the correct answer but there's just one point where like it doesn't quite work but so really if you want to have a fully rigorous derivation please make sure to watch my other video where i use complex analysis and so the question is how can we rewrite this using multivariable calculus what we want to do is consider the complex analytic version namely First step, what we want to do is consider the complex exponential version of this. So consider integral from minus infinity to infinity of ei x squared dx. And the reason is, the nice thing is the imaginary part of this becomes sine of x squared, and the real part becomes cosine of x squared. So we're literally killing two... Uh, sorry, um, two birds with one stone. That's how you say it in English. <laughs> in German, it was like killing two flies with one thing. Anyway, and for sake of completeness, let me just tell you how to derive this, and let me also tell you where the mistake lies. So consider, so let i be the integral from minus infinity to infinity, of ei x squared dx which if you want you can just rewrite this as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of ei y squared dy again it doesn't matter which variable you use you could use x y z heart dolphin anything okay but, but don't use i or e or 2 because you already use that here and the nice thing is, we can multiply this. So i squared then becomes i times i. And that's integral from minus infinity to infinity of ei x squared dx times integral from minus infinity to infinity of ei y squared dy. And look, the nice thing is, this becomes a constant with respect to y. So we can just pull it inside the integral, and what we really get is a double integral of ei x squared, ei y squared, and technically dy dx, but we can Fubini it out, so let's say just say dx dy. And this simplifies nicely, so then we get the following. So this just becomes integral from minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity of ei, <laughs> ei, ei, oh, okay, ei x squared plus y squared dx dy. And now look, we have an x squared plus y squared. So this rings the polar coordinate belt. And the point is, you know, x and y, they're like everything, integrate all the things, and we want to write this in terms of r and theta. And the thing is, if we have a point x, y, this also becomes r and theta, and notice, basically r, it goes from zero to infinity, and the angle theta, it goes from 0 to 2 pi, because 0 to 2 pi is enough to have the whole domain. And so we're left with integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to infinity of ei r squared. And then if you do the Jacobian business, you get a dr d theta, but with an extra factor of r. r d r. -R. And this is very good because it turns out you can find an antiderivative of EIR squared, R dr d theta. Let me 
let me rewrite this this way. R E I R squared, dr d theta. And we're left with integral from 0 to 2 pi of e i r squared okay so what we have to do we have to um, anti-differentiate this and to anti-differentiate this first of all because of the factor of r squared we have an extra factor of 2 which we need to divide this by and also, we need to divide it by i. From r equals to 0 to r equals to infinity, d theta. And alas, here is where the non-rigorous part comes in. Well, technically, what we have is integral from 0 to 2 pi ei to the infinity over 2i minus um, ei0 over 2i d theta. This is still rigorous, but what I'm saying is, let's just ignore the boundary terms and somehow assume that this equals to 0. Again, it's not true, but it gives us the result. And so, in the end, this integral then becomes, I mean, this is very embarrassing for me as a mathematician, but let's just continue that way. Integral from 0 to 2 pi of ei0, which is 1, and so we get uh, minus 1 over 2i d theta. And notice this does not depend on theta, so it just becomes 2 pi times the integral. 2 pi times minus 1 over 2i, the 2's cancel out, and you get minus pi over i, and to be honest, I got slightly worried that we had a negative answer, but remember, it's not quite negative, because it's complex, so one thing I guess we can do is multiply both sides by i, and we get minus pi i over i squared, and so we get minus pi i over minus 1, the minus cancel out, and we get pi i. Pi i am, okay. And so, in the end, what, we ha what did we have? We have that i squared equals to pi i. And again, let's just assume that this gives us i equals to square root of pi i. And you're also correct to say, well, what, what about negative? But again, let's just assume this. And we get integral from minus infinity to infinity of e i x squared dx equals to square root of pi i. Okay. All right. Sorry to be in, infesting my channel with this junk of non-rigorousness, but I still think it's a very neat result. Okay, so we had this integral equals to square root of pi i. It turns out we can you know, clean this up a little bit more. So maybe step two. Well, square root of pi i, well, that's square root of pi times square root of i. But it turns out we can calculate square root of i, and I know black pen, red pen graciously did that, because i is just ei pi over 2. So square root of that, you just take the half power of it, to the 1 half, and we get square root of pi, e i pi over 4. And again, I'm taking the principal square root of this because you could also say, what about, you know, e i 5 pi over 2. Yeah, that's fine too. Okay. And now let's just rewrite this in terms of real and imaginary part. So it's 1 over square root of 2 
plus i times 1 over square root of 2. And that's square root of pi over 2 plus i square root of pi over 2. This is wonderful because we now wrote this complex number in terms of real and imaginary parts. And now if you look at back at this formula, we've basically arrived at our conclusion What we get is integral from minus infinity to infinity of ei x squared dx that's equal to this thing, which is this thing, so square root of pi over 2 plus i square root of pi over 2. And now the last thing we want to do, we want to split this up into real and imaginary parts. So ei x squared becomes cosine x squared plus i sine of x squared dx. I know, I sinned. They're very bad. Okay. <laughs> and so this equals to square root of pi over 2 plus i square root of pi over 2. This, you can also split it up into real and imaginary parts. So by linearity of the integral, this is integral of cosine x squared dx plus i integral sine of x squared dx. Real part plus imaginary part equals to real part plus imaginary part. And now all you got to do is compare the two. And interestingly, you do get the same value. So it turns out that then integral from minus infinity to infinity cosine x squared dx. That's square root of pi over 2. And integral from minus infinity to infinity sine of x squared dx is also square root of pi over 2. So you do get the same formula, and you know even a multivariable calculus student can do it, even though not many calculus students were able to do it on the exam. But again, unfortunately, it's not quite rigorous. And I think to make this rigorous, you really have to go through complex analysis. But it's still a neat idea, I think. All right, thank you so much. So if you like this and want more exciting math and more rigorous math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. And we're happy and we can go home now.